In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a two-player Pong game using a Esprino Pixel.js board, which is a display with a mic controller on it, a piece of breadboard, some wires, and two 10K potentiometers. So the first thing we need to do is connect the potentiometers up. That's nice and easy. We don't actually need these bits of the breadboard, so I'm just gonna take them off. Then we will stick the potentiometers in here. On the breadboard, um, all of these vertical rows up until the middle are shorter together. So it's a nice, easy way of wiring things together. Pick those in. Um, we need to short out the two left-hand sides of these potentiometers, because they're both going to be um, set to ground. And we're going to do the same for the right-hand side, which will be set to 3.3 volts. And finally, we'll, um, we'll connect the middle to two signal pins on the Pixel.js board. So, on the back of this board, um, there is a standard Arduino pinout. Uh, the labels for these pins are shown here. So for ground, um, we want that ground, which is two in from the side. For 3.3, We've got choices as well, but we'll go for that one, which is two in from that side. And now this one will connect to A1. And this one will connect to A0. So that's all nice and simple. Let's end that up so you can see it nicely. Okay, so now we just want to read the value. Um, we're here with the Esprino Web IDE, uh, which is connected by Web Bluetooth on this computer. Um, You've got a text editor on the right hand side, and then you've got this console on the left where you can actually enter commands. So if I say analog read, um, oops, and I say A0, it will read the value from this potentiometer here. And if I turn this, we should see it getting bigger. If I turn it the other way, we should see it getting smaller. So now all we need to do is to take that and the value from this one, which is on A1, and display it on the screen. So I'll create a function called onFrame, which we're going to call um, maybe 20 times a second. So we use set interval, which we'll um, call it every so often, and we give it a number in milliseconds. Well, um, 20 times a second is 50 milliseconds, so we just put that in. Then we want to read the two values um, from analog read and we'll put them into two variables called bat l and bat left for the left and right bat of the pong game. So bat l is that, bat right is a1. And now um, we don't want a value between 0 and 1 which is what this is giving us, we want a value that spans the whole display height. So we just say g.get height. G is a built-in variable that um, that is for the display. So if I now do g.clear, clear the display, if I do g.flip, that will write anything that's changed in memory to the actual physical display. So now we just want to draw our bats. So we'll say fill rect. And we've got um, Four, four numbers with two coordinates. We've got um, x, y, and x, y. So first off, we want it right on the left-hand side. We want it to be at the location of bat left minus um, a, a certain size. So we'll, we'll create a variable called bat size. And then we want to um, make it in a little bit. So three pixels, so it'll be four pixels wide in total. And we'll go for bat l plus bat size. And we'll just define bat size up here, something like eight. And then we'll do the same here for the um, for the right hand one. Um, and we'll probably want to just use the uh, get width for the width of the display. So we'll do width minus four to width minus one. So if we now upload this, we should see two bats. And if I move this, we'll see those move around. And this one, 
we'll see that move around. And now all we need to do is to add the ball. So I'll create a variable called ball and we'll define a, um, an X value and a Y value for this. The X will be right in the middle of the screen. So width over two. The Y will be the same, but will be the height over two. Um, and now we'll have a velocity. And for the moment, we'll make it always um, go in one direction. And we'll say minus one is going left because it's reducing the coordinate. And we'll give it a velocity um, going up or down. And we'll make this random. Um, so math.random is a value between naught and one, but we really want minus one to one. So we're going to subtract one from it, let's say subtract 0 0.5 from it and multiply it by two. And now we'll just increment our ball position. So say ball.x plus equals ball.vx and ball.y plus equals ball.vy. Um, and now we'll draw the ball. So um, select ball.x and we'll just um, make it effectively three wide. So um, subtract one from the values and then add one to them ball dot y minus one and then we'll repeat that and change the minuses to pluses so we'll see the ball start to head off and then it'll go completely off the screen so first thing we want to do i guess is to um, make it bounce off the edges of the screen so we'll say if ball dot y is less than or equal to naught then we'll make the velocity positive. And we do that just by using something called math.abs that makes whatever number you have a positive number. In the same way, if it's uh, gonna be greater than the height, um, and again, the, the display has 128 by 64 pixels, but that means that the pixel numbers go from naught to 63. So we use height minus one. Um, and then we just use abs, but we make that negative. So now, if we're lucky, unfortunately it's a random number, so we can't be sure. If it if it does go off, then um, then it will bounce back. And now we just want to look at how to deal with the bat. Well, the um, the bat starts and ends in pixels actually at three, but then the um, the ball will be at five when it actually appears to hit the bat. So we'll say if ball.x is less than five, then um, we want to start checking the, um, wait, in fact, for starters, let's just not check where the bat is and just, um, just make it reflect back all the time. So we're gonna set the velocity here in the similar way that we did for y. And same way um, for the other end, we'll say if it's greater than, uh, should it get width minus six? Again, because of the extra minus one. And this time we'll make it go back. So now we should hope that our ball will just keep bouncing around on the screen. So it reflects off and then it goes back. And that's looking a lot more like pole. But obviously it's ignoring the um, ignoring where the bats are. So to um, to make that work, all we have to do is add an extra check here to see if it's where the bat is. So we'll say if it's less than five and ball.x is, um, is greater than ball uh, bat left minus bat size. And we'll do the same here, but the other way around. So ball is less than that plus the bat size. And we'll do the same here but we'll, um, we'll just move that around so it makes it a bit easier to, to see. And we'll do that with the right hand bat. So now hopefully, if we upload this, if the ball hits that, that's good. If it gets to the other side though and the bat's nowhere to be seen, it'll just continue straight off. So now all we need to worry about is the score. And so score's nice and easy. Add score left. 
it's not. Say score score right is not. Um, and now we've done all of these checks, we can just say if ball.x is less than naught, then we want to increase the score of the right hand ball. And we also want to um, start a game, a new game. So we'll basically have the code that we had up the top here in a function called new game. Um, so let's get that. Go function new game. And then we'll say ball equals that. So basically, every time we start a new game, we put the ball in the middle with a random direction. And let's this time make it a random location. So we'll say if math.random is greater than 0 0.5, then we make it go right. Otherwise, we make it go left. OK, so we've got new game. Now we need to make sure we actually call new game to start everything off. And we'll make sure we do the score for the um, when it goes to the right. So if it's greater than get width minus one, then score left. And then we'll just draw the scores, which is simply um, g dot draw string. So we'll do score left on the left hand side. We'll move it in a little way from the edge, maybe. And we'll do score right. Um, now to avoid problems with maybe this going off the screen, we'll actually just set some alignment. So we'll say g dot set font align uh, minus one minus one, which makes it left aligned and top aligned. And this one will make it right aligned and top aligned. So hopefully now we have two scores. We have uh, the ball bouncing round, two bats. If I miss this one, it increments the right hand score to one and restarts again. And um, yeah, you basically have a game. You know, you um, you could do a few things like maybe stopping these bats going completely off screen like they do there. Um, and you could make the ball speed maybe get faster. Maybe you could look at how fast the bats are moving and adjust the actual the actual speed of the ball when there's a collision. And that would be as easy as just adding something in here based on the um, on the difference in in the bats. But yeah, that's um, that's basically a um, a two player pong game in just ten minutes. So the only thing to do now would be to um, try and mount this in a box. You can see these have little um, little nuts on them. So all you need to do is drill a hole um, to fit those and those and put this in a box and you can quite nicely have it mounted as a, um, as a two player pong game. You can run it with a uh, coin cell in the back of this, which will probably running this game will last for around a day or two. Um, or you can run it with like a lithium ion or um, or you can just run it off micro USB like it's running at the moment. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more of these things, please subscribe to the channel because I'll be putting on an awful lot more videos in the future showing how to do things with Pixel.js and other S3 netboards.